Hello, my name is Tom Morgan. I'm a Microsoft MVP. And today I'd like to talk to you about how you can use a new feature in Microsoft Teams called App Setup Policy and how you can use it to pin different applications to the Teams menu bar for users in Teams. That means you can change the default behavior that users get in Teams and you can also hide some of the native first party applications, things like chat and Teams, calendars, calls, files. You can actually hide those things by default if they're not appropriate to users. OK, so let's talk about exactly how to do that. So I'm here in the Microsoft Teams admin center. And if you look down the left hand rail, you'll notice there's a section called Teams apps. And within that, there's a section called Setup Policies. Now, this is where you go to set up a new app setup policy and an app setup policy. Um, it controls how applications are shown to users in Teams. So this is a good place to come. By default, when you come here, you're going to have two policies. You're going to have the global one and the first line worker. Um, these get set for you automatically. Um, the global one is, uh, as, as you might imagine it, everybody gets that. It's the default first line worker. So any first line workers are going to get that policy by default. And that is why first line workers have a different look and feel to their team's application. So if you've wondered why that's how that happens, this is exactly how that happens. It's because of the app setup policy stuff. Now you can create your own policies here. So you've seen that I've created one here called my new policy. I'm going to come back to that in a minute. Um, what I'm going to do right now, though, is just click on new policy and show you what that looks like. So here you can create a new policy. You can give it a name and a description. Now, by default, it's going to give you the default behavior for Teams users. And that is um, these six applications that you are used to seeing. It's the default in Teams and it's the default layout as well. But there's actually nothing to say you can't change some of these. So I can choose this uh, activity app here. I can move it down to the bottom if I don't want it. I can remove it entirely. I can remove all of these first party applications if I don't want them. Um, I can take them away entirely and I can add new ones. Now when I add new apps, um, those apps are ones that are going to be in the app store or they might be apps that are in my local company store. So you can, when you um, have apps, you can build up yourself, you can deploy them just to your organization store, um, or you can deploy them all the way um, up to the up to the app store. So if I was to search for Microsoft, for instance, uh, there aren't any apps, that's annoying. Uh, so let's search for um, Adobe. Um, I can see there's Adobe Sign and Adobe Creative Cloud. If I search for an app um, I know exists, um, it's one I've written called Remember This. You can see it here, I can choose it and I can add it in um, to the number of pinned apps. And when I do that, it shows on the list of apps. I can move it up to the top if I want um, and I can then make that the default experience. So if you see here, my new policy that I talked about earlier, what I've actually done is taken away all of the default apps and I've just got a single app called Remember This. Okay. So that's how you create the policies and you can create as many policies as you like and you might decide to have different policies for different groups of users. So perhaps finance has to have different app needs from IT. And maybe you want to control that experience slightly differently or you might decide to do it with um, just changing the global default and saying actually by default we don't want our users to have uh, calls or chats or whatever else it is that makes sense for your organization. So that's how you create the policies but how do you actually get those policies rolled out to specific users. Well, in order to do that, we need to come up to the users section up here. And this gives us a list of users um, that are enabled for Teams. Uh, and if we pick a user, um, we can just pick a random user here. Um, when we open that list of that, that user to edit that user, if you uh, come past all this general information here around um, you know, the audio, audio conferencing information, if we come down to assigned policies at the bottom, we can see here, these are the policies that are assigned to this user. And under app setup policy, you can see that this user has the global, the org wide default policy. And all your users are going to have that policy by default if you don't do anything. But of course, we can change that. So um, if I come in here and edit this, um, I can change this app setup policy so I can drop down from that list of policies that I've created so I can see my new policy here. Um, I can choose it for this user. I can save it and then that policy will get rolled out to that user. 
Now rolling out that policy to that user does take a little bit of time. Um, so if we take uh, Megan here, Megan Bowen, um, I set this policy uh, yesterday. Um, and you can see it set here, that my new policy, um, policy setting for the app setup policy. That means that if I go to Teams as that user, um, which is kind of this tab over here, you can see on the right up here at the top, I'm logged in as that Megan user. But over here on the left, look at this default experience. By default, I only have that single app. Um, I don't have any of the standard Teams apps. So this is how you can kind of control that user experience either by augmenting the first party apps that are there or by replacing them. Um, it is entirely up to you. Now, one really important point here to make kind of super clear is that you're not necessarily disabling access to all of those applications. So for all of those first party applications, they are still here, they're in this ellipsis. So if I click the ellipsis, I can see them all, including some that aren't even listed. Okay, and I still have access to the app catalog. So. This isn't a way of necessarily disabling functionality, it's more about hiding it or changing that default experience that users have. And so that can be a really useful aid um, when it comes to user adoption, where you maybe want to roll out features and surface features to users one at a time. But if you've got power users um, that are happy just kind of looking around and discovering for themselves, you're not turning things off for them either. So that's how you can use app setup policies to really change um, that experience of how users work. So quick recap, you wanna be using the Microsoft Teams Admin Center. You wanna come under Teams app and set up policies. Here, this is where you can create the new policies. You can set them up exactly how you like, and then you come to users to apply those particular policies to specific groups of users. All right. I hope that's been useful. Um, if you like these style of videos, then uh, I'd encourage you to go to my YouTube channel and subscribe to them as well. Um, you can also catch blog posts about all of these things. Um, and you can also find me on Twitter. Um, I'll put all the links on the screen right now. Have a great day and I will speak to you soon.